Hi, I'm Mark Waite and welcome back to Mark My Words. Today we're going to talk about relationships and in particular core values in the next relationship if you're rebuilding your life from a divorce or a long-term relationship breakdown. What are core values? How they play a role in the next relationship and why they're important for you to understand your own core values and then at what time in the conversation prior to when you commit to that next relationship long term do you have the conversation around some of these core values and i'm talking the big ones in life right god sex money politics these are the things that are almost in society taboo to talk about socially and yet they are the very things that can have the potential to cause conflict and stress in a relationship in the long run. So when do you have the conversation around where that, that other person's at in those key areas? Do What do they believe in these key areas? And they're not the only ones, but we'll start there. Up next on this video. So if you've seen some of my videos, you know a little bit about my story and that is I had a catastrophic marriage and business collapse back in 2008 and I have since rebuilt my life and I love helping people re rebuild their lives, make a, a comeback which is uh, off the back of a setback which can has the potential to wipe you out but in actual fact you turn it around into being something which is really quite exciting and, and, and just a, such a, a personal satisfaction thing for you. So core values are important and it's important to know what yours are and particularly if you're entering into a new relationship. So how do you know what to talk about around core values and when do you have the conversation? Obviously you're not going to have these conversations uh, on the first date but you will eventually need to have a conversation and get some sort of clarity around where that other person stands on some of these big issues because they are big issues in life. I swore that I would not get back into another long-term, uh, full-on committed relationship again. And that was really, a lot of that was out of the pain of the previous divorce I've been through. So, you know, we can sometimes say, oh, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> You know, um, it's like when you get bit by a dog. Have you ever been bitten by a dog? Um, it's not a it's not a pleasant experience. And so, when you go then for a walk uh, again at some time in the future after you've been bitten, every dog you see, you kind of look at it with a different lens, through a different lens. You you, you walk, take a wide berth sometimes around that next dog. Even it could be the most placid little thing, but you won't get anywhere near it because you you know what they're like. And that's a bit like what I was like um, post my divorce, you know. The thought of um, recommitting long term in a marriage was just not on my radar. Time is amazing how it heals people and it healed me too and I met Kate and she changed my life and we ended up being married after two years of dating and, and we've been now married uh, almost six years. Um, we've got a beautiful little one-year-old baby daughter. Early on in the relationship, when we were courting and when we were going out, um, I was curious and keen to know, um, obviously, about her, as anyone is in any when when you take anyone out for a date or uh, you have some sort of a romantic uh, courtship, you. I got to a place where I thought, man, you know, if I could, if I could ever remarry again, um, it would be to someone like this. That's how I thought about Kate after a couple of times of going out with her, and mainly it was because we had a lot in common and we had similar interests and similar core values in life. And I just got thinking about it and people often ask, you know, what's the key to rebuilding? How did you find the courage to rebuild 
and recommit in a new relationship. And I, I thought to myself, well, I think for a lot of it, it was really obviously apart from the obvious things that Kate was just a beautiful person and very attractive and uh, had a had a amazing heart. It was her things that she was passionate about and the and the and the and the areas of life that were really um, big in terms of you know issues and core values that really attracted me to her because they were similar to mine. And you know, for example, the big ones around you know money around uh, politics, around sex, around God. You know, now society teaches us not to have these conversations so socially, you know, and yet they are huge rocks when it comes to um, our belief system and our core values and what we believe about who we are and what we believe is right or wrong in the world. So, you know, having someone in a relationship long term, you know, that has similar core values is a wise move, you know, and but how do you know what their core values are and at what stage in the in the relationship do you actually have the conversation? Do you have it first date? <laughs> well, you maybe, maybe you do. I, I, I wouldn't do that necessarily, um, but it wouldn't be that romantic, would it? So, but at some point in early in the early stages of the relationship, these subjects need to be at least clear in your mind about where the other person stands. So, you know, God, for example, do you believe in God or, or don't you? And does the other person believe in God or don't they? Because if you do and they don't, that has the potential to be a, a, a point of conflict or a point of tension in your relationship, which you probably don't need. Um, similarly, if you don't believe in God and they do, the same thing for you, you're going to have a point of conflict there sooner or later. Uh, unless you get around some kind of alignment around that subject. Same with sex. You know, what do you believe? What, 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 are, what are some of your boundaries around sex? You know, sex is such a powerful thing in a relationship. It's, a, it's such a blessing in a relationship. But, you know, if you have different values and priorities and, and needs and wants and, and different boundaries in, in the sexual area of your life uh, than your partner, then that's going to be a point of conflict for you sooner or later. Uh, it's the same with money, you know, your view on money. Um, what do you believe around, um, you know, how to spend, how to save, how to create wealth, how to progress financially? Uh, if you uh, have, a, have a clear, you know, have, have clear values around the subject of money, you're hoping that the person that you're going to commit to long term will, will, will at least be on the same wavelength as you around that subject. Um, it's the same with politics as well. It's a, it's a biggie. Now you may or may not be into politics, but if you are, then if you are, you know, a more socialist or you could be conservative. Whether you're conservative or socialist, you know, let's say you're passionate, so you're a passionate socialist, you know, and you're now looking to enter in a relationship with someone who's a passionate conservative. That those 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 different values will potentially be an issue for you long term. Uh, not impossible to to live with someone who has a total different who's on a total different uh, you know spectrum to use politically, but it's it's not altogether common. Um, and it does produce in for a lot of couples a point of conflict. it's it's a different political value system. So these are conversations that you know, do they have to be had? No. Um, should they be had? Yes, I believe so. You can either have them uh, prior to that point of no return. You know, when a pilot takes off on an aeroplane, you know, he'll get he'll get the all clear from the tower, and and then puts the throttle down. And at a certain point down that runway on takeoff, there is a point called the point of no return, and that is the point by which if you're ever going to not take off and abort the takeoff, you need to make that decision prior to that point of no return. Because once you go beyond the point of no return, you're going to run out of runway and you, ha you are committed to fly if you don't. So it's really important that you make that decision before you get to that point of no return in a relationship where you are committed to fly, you're committed long term, that you have the conversation around some of the big rocks in life. And they're the ones I've mentioned, because you know if that, if that conversation's left till after the point of no return, you know, you, for example, you get committed to someone, 
and out of conversation, you know, once you're locked in and married, you all of a sudden realize that once the passion's worn off and the commitment of, they say, after every wedding comes a marriage, right? But once you're in the, once the passion and the honeymoon period, you know, hopefully it lasts a long time, but eventually you get into the, into the, into the activities of life, which are, you know, paying off a mortgage, creating a family, uh, into the, into the less glamorous, less romantic parts of a marriage, which, which are all part of it. And then you find out at that point that your partner has a different view on spiritual issues. You know, they don't actually believe in God. In fact, they're passionately anti-God. And yet you have a you have a spiritual side of you which really is open to the things of God. Um, that can be a, a potential that a potential issue that is um, that is a game changer for you in a negative way. It's the same with money. It's the same with uh, sex. It's the same with um, uh, politics, uh, you know, it's it's same with family, right? Family, what what your priorities and values around family? Having values, core values in these key areas of life, are really important for you know, to know where you stand, right? And so you're confident about who you are and what you're about, because as they say, if you don't believe for, believe in something, you'll fall for anything. But being being clear in your own mind about what they are for you. And then having the courage to have the conversation with your potential partner that has that potential, that relationship to be long term in a marriage long term, having those conversations before you get to that point where it is full on commitment, 100% is a wise move. Leaving it to chance is a high risk move, which I don't think is really um, wise because the risk of of being hurt again, both emotionally, financially, in every area of your life because of a relationship breakdown is something you're not, you don't want to go through again. You know, I, I learned uh, only recently actually where someone, I heard someone say, you know, on the battlefield of failure, leave no lessons behind. Because if you do, they'll come back and bite you on the bum twice as hard next time. And I believe that's true. I think you've got to learn if you've been through a marriage breakup or a divorce, you know, what were the things that caused that relationship breakdown? Uh, were they something that that was um, could have been avoided had you had a conversation prior to committing is the question. So hopefully that helps. We sometimes naturally want to avoid having these conversations because of the risk of that person, the other person not agreeing with you or being in alignment with your values. Because I can't imagine, you know, um, with Kate and I, her being a polar opposite to me politically, spiritually, financially, um, and, you know, in our relationship in terms of, uh, you know, say sex, it's, it's, um, it's, we, we, we are in alignment around those key areas. We have some you know, slight differences in opinion in certain things, and that's a healthy thing. But, um, but fundamentally, we are of the same values. So that's important. It brings a unity to your relationship. It brings a, a, a common um, belief around the big rocks of life in your relationship, and it's one less thing that you have uh, the potential of being in conflict over. So it makes it easier because life in a relationship is hard enough. You don't want to be in a place where you have unnecessary challenges by, could, which could have been avoided by having the conversations around some of these important core values. So if you like this video, hey, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. That way when I upload a new video, you'll be up to date with, uh, with that and also I rebuilt my life and I'm just so blessed today that I did and I've got uh, some, I've got 10 bold steps. I call it my 10 bold steps. These are things that I did to help me rebuild and fast track my life to a serious comeback. And today, you know, I've, I'm in a better position today in all areas of my life, financially, physically, maritally, family. And I've called it my 10 bold steps and I want to give that to you today free. Um, if you go on the 
link below you'll see my website themarkweight.com I will ask you for your email address so I can then email those to you but they're my 10 bold steps these are 10 steps that I took to help me fast track my comeback to um, a point where I'm really so blessed today that I did so they're yours today free so until next time I'll see you on the next video